Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So earlier this morning, I did take down uh, one of the fights um, to unlock the Elpis staff. And so in this video, we're going to finally finish off uh, one of the last S-Class bounty fights in order to unlock and obtain the Elpis sword. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. I also do have a Patreon account for those who want to support me this way. So again, uh, most of these items were unlocked earlier in the uh, you know in my quest on the videos. So make sure you do check out my exploration from chapters ninety to ninety two to kind of see where I explored, as well as some of the earlier bounty hunts as well. Because the thing is, um, all of them kind of result in the culmination of this fight. Also, as a precursor to fighting Picky, I believe you have to take down all the other S-Class bounties first. And so this actually was not unlocked with a blue icon until I took down Dr. Featon. Uh, and earlier, obviously, last night, I took down um, El Tomas. So again, just like before, the previous two fights, I did uh, dominate the fights with um, Sesta. And since we can't refight them, now I can let Sesta and it's her time to shine as opposed to a Manolka-led team or some other uh, Efi-led team. One of the mechanics that you know from 3.0 is that the vast majority of the super bosses and even many of the horrors had multi-hit shields, which made things very, very annoying. And so um, being that Sesta is our newest barrier pierced unit and she is essentially uh, makes any mid-range uh, uh, wind team an uh, absolute monster and powerhouse. So provided the boss cannot break your zone, you're essentially invulnerable. Um, and keep in mind that uh, I didn't mention this in my er earlier videos, but we are bringing a hyper aggressive team. We don't even need defense. Note that we don't have any tanks. We don't have any revivals. We don't have any uh, dual debuffers. All we do bring in straight out DPS because it's almost like the Melissa less led strats many, many years ago. And remember how Melissa changed the game? I would say Sesta for certain types of teams, wind teams specifically, has changed the game as well. Where essentially, just like Melissa, you do a one turn AF, the boss can do an HP stop or a counter, as long as you survive it, the boss can't do anything. Has not no chance to act at all. All it does is stand there just like the bag baddies, and you're slapping it silly. Remember that Picky does have a barrier, and is a complete barrier. It's not a, a multi-hit barrier that I'm aware of. And so, um, again, I left it out. Did not want to do anything about it. Note that if you do bring it down with an AF and you have zero AF charge, it gives you a half AF right away, which is quite, quite a nice. And so, uh, apparently, one of the main strats is uh, supposed to be that you are supposed to stall it out until that shield goes down. It lasts four turns, as you can clearly see from the statuses. But since we have barrier break um, or barrier pierce, just like um, you're using a monocle team, you can just walk right through it. So you can AF and then AF and then AF. There are three HP bars, no HP stoppers. And so again, um, it's literally just AF, AF, AF. Now, one thing of note when I do do the AF is for the second and third AFs, I don't have to reapply any debuffs. Everything's already active. And um, unlike the previous bosses, it didn't remove any debuffs that I'm aware of. Uh, one other note is that uh, you don't have to activate the Twin Blade Wolf during the AF right away. You can actually use her Starving Wolf attack, which is just her regular DPS attack. Keep in mind that does not barrier pierce because it only barrier pierces when you do the Twin Blade Wolf. Just wait for the combo multiplier to go high enough and then you activate it near the mid or end of the AF. Keep in mind that it will interrupt and die if you run out of AF charge. So keep on spamming the button. Um, Twin Blade Wolf will activate all five moves back to back to back and as long as AF charge is still there it will also charge the AF with each of those moves that are not the buffs. So I, I believe that there's two buffs, three attacks. Keep that in mind. Okay, so unfortunately as part of its uh, mechanics it randomly applies a debuff to the enemy, uh, to your team, one member, and continues applying debuffs that eventually can end the boss uh, fight. And I believe debuff resistance grasso will not help you it's more like a, those auras or statuses or those red orbs that basically kind of like a um, you know when you chart uh, when you use um, ogre and corm light to apply a orb to the enemy same idea you can't bypass it. it doesn't even count as a status you can't remove it or anything like that and over time it will just eat up that enemy uh, sorry member of your team however at the end of the day even with three people on the team 
Seriously speaking, Twin Blade Wolf is just overpowered and broken. And again, very brain dread strat. The only strat is really pressing the far right button or far left button as you choose and knowing when to time Twin Blade Wolf, which I can say is a little bit of AF piano, but really not a lot of skill at this level. I'm sure most of you by this time are expert in playing the AF piano, even if you have never taken any piano lessons. And so there's that. So I do apologize for the using the same team. Pretty lame. Uh, not very much, uh, uh, I guess, experimentation or not too much uh, eleganto clear in that sense. Uh, not, yeah, not a lot of, uh, you know, flair, shall I say. However, who cares about flair? All we're here to do is beat the game. And again, um, it's, it's nice to be able to walk over the boss. I know I bypassed the mechanics, so it didn't solve a puzzle. But let's be honest. The boss mechanics nowadays aren't even about solving puzzles so much as, well, you know, if you use the harder the you scam or use powerful units, the harder the boss will counter you. So um, it wasn't like beginning where, you know, like one fight I really did like is the true Ember Magic Dragon. You had to f counter its rotations. Um, the boss had fixed movesets. And by solving which moves you had to counter in VC in and VC out, it was much more um, rewarding. That being said, all is done, and for our rewards, we do get an Elpis Sword. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.